Hello everyone, this is Harry's Movie. In this issue, let's look at a crime film, Bad Education, adapted from real events. Roslyn High School was a public school located on Long Island, New York. Based on college entrance examination results and college acceptance rate, Roslyn ranked fourth in the top public schools in the United States in 2002. This was all thanks to the school district director Frank. It took him 10 years of hard work to make the unknown Roslyn High School achieve today's results. But Frank was not satisfied with this. His goal was achieving the first rank of the nation. Frank was full of enthusiasm for education. He always had a smile on his amiable face and always encouraged the children. He remembered the name and family background of each student, even knew the students' target universities. Even when faced with students with poor grades and difficult parents, he could also patiently encourage and teach them. He wanted every student to believe that he could fulfill the dream of a college student. Frank and the school board were busy planning to build the Skywalk. This was a bridge connecting both ends of the school to make life easier for students. At the same time, it was also a preparation for being the best in the US. Student Rachel was a reporter for the school magazine. She intended to write an article about the Skywalk project, so she came to interview Pam, the administrator of the school. Pam happened to be out of the office. Frank accepted an interview with Rachel. When he learned that Rachel just wanted to write a flattering article, Frank taught her, a true journalist could turn any homework into a wonderful report. Rachel, who was inspired, decided to learn more about the Footbridge Trail project according to news standards. Since the Wall Street Journal reported Roslyn High School ranked fourth in the US, housing prices near the school had soared. The directors who hold several school district houses made a lot of money. They gave Frank some snacks as a thank you. But these high-calorie foods were not suitable for Frank. To manage the body image, Frank not only had a self-disciplined diet but also studied anti-aging methods. His fame and personal charm made many women want to be with him. He was never disturbed by them. Frank was a very dedicated person. Although his wife had passed away for decades, he never forgot his wife. He refused to take off his wedding ring. Pam was Frank's right-hand subordinate. The two worked together tacitly. However, on this day, the school directors suddenly broke to Frank that Pam had embezzled the school's public funds. It turned out that Pam's villa was going to be renovated recently Pam's son went to the hardware store to buy a lot of renovation materials. The clerk saw that he was swiping the official business card of Roslyn High School and provided free delivery service to such a high-quality large customer. However, the delivery address was not a school but a home address. So the people at the hardware store reported this to the chairman of the school board. The school boards checked the sales list. Indeed, some materials used in home decoration had nothing to do with the school. And the cardholder was a young man with the surname McCartan. But as far as they know, no one of their colleagues had the name, McCartan. At this time, someone remembered Pam's first husband was McCartan. Pam's embezzlement of public funds was revealed. The auditor of the school started to check Pam's account here. They couldn't imagine that the hardware store alone embezzled 30,000 US dollars. Only God knew how much Pam had embezzled. Everyone clamored to report to the Bureau of Investigation. Frank made everyone calm down after considering carefully it, because he couldn't act recklessly. Then he learned from the auditor that from the account alone, Pam embezzled $250,000 in public funds. But this was obviously just the tip of the ice. The school managers were very angry and wanted to call the police but Frank stopped them. He was worried that once this scandal was exposed the school's education budget would go to waste and the rank of the school would fall quickly even affected the admissions of top universities to Roslyn School. The results they had achieved over the years would be wiped out. And these factors were bound to affect the price of nearby real estate. School managers all had investments in school district housing. Naturally, they didn't want to hurt themselves. So they decided to follow Frank's advice and handled the matter in a low-key manner. They asked Pam to return the embezzled 250,000 public funds, and then resigned on the grounds of mental illness. At the same time, she had to hand over the administrative license and sign the confidentiality agreement not to disclose the matter. Pam had worked with Frank for many years. She thought they were very close. Unexpectedly, at the critical moment, Frank abandoned her and ignored her. Pam thought again that this might be Frank's way of dealing with the school board members so she promised all the conditions. But she didn't expect that Frank would never answer her calls again. The school directors didn't expect they could persuade Pam to go so smoothly, so the school's reputation was preserved. Their investment was not lost. They once again praised Frank's ability to deal with crisis events. At the same time, Rachel checked the budget data of Skywalk in the archives and found the cost of this commercial project was as high as 8 million bucks. So she wrote an article entitled, The Record-Setting Skywalk Proves a Costly Undertaking, Report. But it was rejected by the editor of the school magazine. The editor told Rachel that this was not the New York Times. They edited school journals only for extracurricular activities to go to a good university. But Rachel did not give up, because she always felt that there were many articles in it. Then she checked from the invoice issued by the supplier sure enough, she found something strange. Some suppliers didn't know anything about the payment on the invoice. Some phones shut down. There was also a consulting company, but it was a car sales company. 
and it was Pam's current husband who answered the call. It turned out that Pam's villas and luxury cars were all from embezzling public funds. She asked her husband, who was an accountant, to do false accounting for her and declared that her husband worked in a consulting company to cover up the source of her high income. Rachel even discovered that one of the technology companies did not exist. But it issued 800,000 invoices to the school every year. She came to Manhattan at the registered address. She saw this was an apartment building. She knocked on the door and saw a man was living inside. The furnishings inside did not look like a company. Rachel was about to go downstairs but met Frank who came back. Frank saw Rachel when he was taking the key to open the door. After two seconds of embarrassment, Rachel fled in a hurry. It turned out to be Frank and his same-sex lover's private apartment. He was surprised by Rachel's appearance but didn't panic at all. But he couldn't expect that the motivation for Rachel at the beginning had dug a big hole for himself. Rachel told the editor of the results of the investigation. The editor-in-chief saw that all the fingers were directed at Frank. He couldn't help but get caught up in conflict. Because Frank was writing his college recommendation letter, he couldn't help but think about his future. After Frank met Rachel at school he asked her why she appeared in the apartment yesterday. Rachel said she was investigating the registered address of the school contractor. Frank said that if she disclosed something she didn't understand it would hurt many innocent people. And her investigations were like detonating a school grenade. The consequences of frantically pursuing the truth would only hurt innocent people. He hoped Rachel could think of this carefully. Rachel didn't know what to do. So she asked about her father's work. Her father was expelled for involvement in insider trading. But her father assured Rachel that he was really not involved. In fact, he knew who was involved since the beginning. But after thinking that these people were his friends and also his families, he chose to be silent and didn't say anything. Now he had to take responsibility for his silence. Her father's words solved Rachel's confusion. This morning Frank went to school as usual and greeted the student kindly. But he found that everyone's expression when looking at him had changed. He found out when he came to the office the school front page published a scandal about his corruption. The perfect person that Frank had built up for many years collapsed instantly. But he said he was not for money. He just thought that if he wanted something, he had to have it. He made Roslyn from a little-known school to the fourth rank in the nation. When the school directors relied on raising the school district housing prices, he still only got a teacher-level salary. So Frank felt that the value he created far exceeded the amount of money he would taint. When the reason for Pam's real resignation was made public, she was formally prosecuted and investigated, to save her son she surrendered evidence about Frank's corruption. Frank saw that the situation was hopeless so he chose to spend the last good time with his lover. The boy was a former student of Frank. He loved to write science fiction novels and was talented. Later, he became a dancer for various reasons. Frank left $30,000 for the boy before he was arrested to let the boy pursue his writing talent. The partner who lived with Frank for 33 years knew about Frank's derailment only after seeing the photos during the interrogation. Although staying in a deluxe single room Frank still maintained sophistication and elegance. Someday he dreamed of going back to school and saw that his wish came true. Roslyn High School finally became the nation's number one there was thunderous applause from the audience, and tears filled his eyes as he stood on the stage. Finally, Rachel became a news editor as she wished. Frank was sentenced to 4-12 to 12 years in prison for embezzling $2.2 million in public funds from the Roslyn School District. Pam admitted to embezzling $4.3 million. Because she appeared in court to testify against Frank so she was sentenced to 3-9 to nine years a total of $11 million stolen from the Roslyn School District was the largest school theft in American history. But due to an oversight in the New York State pension regulations, Frank was still slated to receive approximately $20 per year. This was a criminal who devoted himself to education. Okay, this is the end of this issue. Friends who like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, see you next time.